morning, researchers at the University of California, Davis, continue a three-day coffee sensory summit. The university wants to be a worldwide epicenter of coffee research, just as climate change threatens the multi-billion dollar industry. Purdue researchers have reported that three quarters of the farmers in Colombia say droughts have gotten longer. 61% say the land is eroding, and nearly the same number see an increase in crop disease. Five years ago, a scientific journal warned forward-looking research on adaption is therefore in high demand across the entire supply chain. That research is now being done in Davis and beyond in both conventional and novel ways. The main goal today is to illustrate the principle of conservation of mass. Bill Ristenpart isn't your average chemical engineering professor. Part A, we're going to be doing a whole bunch of brews in the Mr. Coffee. Use the same amount of water every time, okay, but then systematically vary the mass of the coffee grounds. In his introduction to chemical engineering class, the design of coffee, students get to discover the science inside a cup of joe. And then part B, this is really exciting, we get to do our first roast. Are you guys excited about that? Woo! Yeah, okay, cool, right? Ristenpart started the class in 2013 as a freshman seminar. The idea came to him during, what else? A coffee break with a colleague. We were drinking coffee one day thinking about how to improve our engineering labs and she suggested the idea why don't we have our students take apart a Mr. Coffee drip brewer and I thought oh my gosh why don't we make a whole class about coffee. The class that started with just 18 students is now attended by 2,000 a year. Its popularity was highlighted a few years back in a campus poll. One of their questions was what is the best general education class? And number one was the design of coffee. Number two was introduction to human sexuality. And number three was introduction to beer brewing. And so now we like to say that at UC Davis, coffee is better than beer and sex. <laughs> it's a good selling point for it, a lot of people. It is. What we didn't anticipate was how much interest there was from the industry. And they came to us and said, hey, you know, we need research. There are a lot of unanswered questions about coffee, and coffee faces a lot of issues, and we would love to partner with uh, somebody in academia. UC Davis is well known for its agricultural research in fields like beer brewing and viticulture, or wine growing. They actually have a vineyard right on campus. And so one of our big goals is to make UC Davis an international location of excellence to create an academic talent pipeline to support the coffee industry. They've already built a coffee center with a prototype pilot roastery run by the former head roaster at Blue Bottle Coffee, a brewing and espresso laboratory, and a dedicated sensory lab. In all, there are about 35 professors teaching courses on everything from food science to global social change in coffee cultures, 1500 to present. Why do we need somebody who knows how to do these things? Anything um, that helps the coffee industry produce better cups of coffee of higher quality to increase demand helps not only people here in the United States, but also there's a tremendous number of people around the world who live in developing countries whose livelihood depends on coffee. And so there's about 100 million people who make a living by picking coffee. One of the existential threats to their livelihoods and our cups of coffee is climate change. It's a huge concern. There are lots of discussions right now about whether we'll have coffee in 30 years. Three years ago, UC Davis had a breakthrough that could have a profound impact on coffee's survival, when Juan Medrano and Alan Van Dynes became the first geneticists to create a reference genome for a coffee bean. For the layperson, what does that mean when you say there's no genome to reference? There was no reference genome. So there's no book that tells me what is the sequence and the genes in the coffee genome. Okay. And that was very surprising to me because being a, an industry that is $20 billion industry, 2.4 billion cups of coffee every year, and there's no genome sequence when most crops have a sequence. Why do we need the genomes for plants like this? It's a tool in plant breeding. It's the second most traded commodity in the world, but nobody's looking at it at the plant level. The pair homed in on C. arabica, the bean behind 70% of worldwide consumption. Coffee is grown almost exclusively outside of the United States, but Van Dynes and Medrano picked a geisha variety grown in Goleta, California, from the Goodland Organics farm we first featured yeah, nearly three like years ago. All that will set. Yeah. Basically, you take leaves of coffee, of a coffee plant. Right. And these leaves of coffee plants are macerated, and you extract DNA from the cells inside the leaves. Okay. And then you create a collection 
of DNA fragments. What we ended up putting together was uh, 1.2 billion base pairs, so pieces of DNA. They're not 100% in order, but they're in very good shape. The goal is to breed a plant that can grow at higher altitudes and fight diseases like rust. We say this all the time, but the coffee bean is, it's magical. Outside of academia, the Seattle startup Atomo Coffee is taking the exact opposite approach to coffee research. Food scientist Jarrett Stopforth and his co-founder Andy Kleitsch want to make coffee without the bean. They call it molecular coffee. We talk about how when he told me he wanted to hack coffee that it blew my mind, but it really did. It always gets everyone just imagining, like, what is that? How does that work? Ship it up to Seattle. Otomo mixes plant-based agricultural byproducts and caffeine that, when combined, mimics actual coffee, down to the aroma and flavor. The company, which launched last February on Kickstarter, has raised $2.5 million in venture capital. We joke around that this is like the $10,000 cup of coffee right now, but as we scale our production, we'll see our costs drop pretty dramatically in which we should be able to make coffee that is great tasting, that is actually cheaper to produce than coffee today. Atomo plans to roll out its cold brew coffee later this year as it waits for patent approval, while UC Davis has made the Arabica genome publicly available to anyone. Why not make money off of it? The basic knowledge of the reference genome it's really an opportunity for many scientists, for many people in different parts of the world to benefit and produce great coffees from it. And that's the ingenuity. This is pre-competitive research is a good way of looking at it. We're a public institution, and the, the idea is let's raise the bar for everybody. Medrano, who's now retired from the university, is a co-founder of Fringe Coffee with Jay Rusky of Goodland Organics. This is our uh, greenhouse, this plant right here. This one that says geisha, Yeah. this is exactly the one that was sequenced. This is a unique hybrid, you know, that is resistant to frost. This coffee has 40% less caffeine. Ah, the midday but, coffee, so you're not too coffee, awake right. and not too tired. <laughs> but it has a very floral, very exquisite flavor. The aroma is fantastic. I would say this is an all day drinking coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's delicious really delicious and it's sort Super of interesting yeah I mean it's the bottom line is can we make a stronger coffee bean so that it can survive some of the climate change or can we find other plant-based things that we can combine mm. so that we can have coffee and that's what both these places are doing because this is a real issue because UC Davis believes they've scientifically established that coffee is better than beer and sex <laughs> apparently according there to students <laughs> Well, you According know, to their was students, in the piece. I, I would like to taste for myself, so I'm wondering what the one without The one without the actual beans. Yes, yeah. I would. Yeah. We'll work would. on that. They're working to get their cold brew released out to the public right All now, waiting then. for some patent. Yeah, well, we're up first. <laughs>